I'm Tom Deere from the University of Arkansas, and I'd like to thank you all for coming and uh, thank the organizers for the opportunity to uh, present the work going on in our lab. Um, so sulfur-specific maturation of nitrogenase in a methanogen. Um, I've got some, uh, to me, pretty exciting results to share with you, but first I want to go through a little bit of background. Um, so Earth's geochemistry has uh, shifted pretty radically over geologic time. Um, early on, we think there were um, locally abundant sources of reduced iron and sulfide, and that ancient cells um, um, broadly made use of these in uh, incorporating clusters into iron sulfur proteins uh, to carry out important reactions for life. Uh, and then with the rise of atmospheric oxygen, um, these became much less attractive cofactors, so uh, where possible, uh, aerobes have minimized their use. But modern uh, anaerobes, particularly strict anaerobes like methanogens, uh, still make use of loads of iron sulfur proteins, and so they sort of represent a, a window into the past, um, you know, get some idea of um, metabolism on, on early Earth. <clears throat> Um, methanogens are also um, extremely important in studying the nitrogen cycle, um, thanks to some really great work by uh, Eric Boyd and John Peters and, uh, and many others. Um, there's good evidence that um, the nitrogenase enzyme that's responsible for the biological fixation of dinitrogen uh, first arose in methanogens. Um, so a broad outline of the way that the um, the reaction progresses, dinitrogen is reduced to ammonia at the expense of reducing equivalents and um, quite a bit of energy. And um, there are iron sulfur clusters, some somewhat bizarre ones um, compared to the broad range of iron sulfur uh, proteins that are required to carry this out. Um, and then methanogens notably um, code for a lot of other iron sulfur proteins um, that are of interest to astrobiologists and people studying early Earth, including um, ferrodoxins, uh, hydrogenase, and carbon monoxide dehydrogenase. Um, but given that all of these iron sulfur clusters are needed in methanogens, we know little to nothing about how they're actually being assembled. <clears throat> so. What we do know about iron sulfur cluster biogenesis, uh, we mostly know from bacteria and eukaryotes. Um, so there are three described systems uh, with some commonalities running through them. Um, the first system described was actually the NIF system. Uh, this is specific for nitrogenase, um, described in Azotobacter vinlandii. Um, Next described was the ISC or ISC system, um, and so this is quite similar to NIF, but more widely distributed uh, among bacteria and the mitochondria of eukaryotes. Um, this is more of a housekeeping system for general iron sulfur cluster biogenesis. And then last described was the SUF system, and this is especially important uh, today in strict anaerobes, uh, strict anaerobic bacteria, and in the chloroplasts of plants. Common to all three systems is um, the overall reaction scheme, which is um, a cysteine desulfurase to take sulfur from cysteine and uh, then to help assemble with some iron coming from somewhere, it varies depending on the organism in the system, uh, to assemble a cluster on a scaffold protein. So for NIF and ISC, um, the cysteine desulfurases are the S proteins, the U proteins are the scaffolds, and then uh, from the scaffold, a cluster can be handed off to a target apoprotein. Uh, the SUF system works the same way um, in, as it's been described in bacteria, uh, but the scaffold is a multimer of B, C, or B, C, and D uh, SUF proteins. Um, but all of them have in common um, the facts that free iron and sulfide are broadly toxic to most cells, uh, so controlled biogenesis is required. And um, for all three of these systems, as described, everything kind of runs through cysteine. Cysteine is the sulfur donor. Um, now, methanogens um, categorically seem to lack a NIF-type uh, dedicated um, biogenesis system for nitrogenase. 
which is sort of surprising because you can find the, um, the core nitrogenase genes in members of all seven orders of extant methanogens. Uh, the two deeply rooted orders um, are somewhat metabolically restricted to uh, CO2 reduction. Uh, these do not use cysteine as a sole sulfur source when they're growing. And uh, there actually is some evidence showing that inorganic sulfide is the direct donor for iron sulfur clusters. So that flies in the face of what I just showed you for everything we know from bacteria and eukaryotes. Um, so they are not predicted to code for a cysteine desulfurase, just the core SUF proteins. Um, and I'll go ahead and tell you now that those SUF proteins seem like they're universally conserved in methanogens and uh, even more broadly in archaea. Uh, so the five later evolving orders of methanogens um, so also have those SUF core proteins. Um, uh, many of them also appear to have uh, the core uh, ISK system as well. Um, these are more flexible. They, um, some of them are capable of multiple uh, methanogenesis pathways and um, have briefly been reported, uh, several of them, to be able to grow on cysteine or sulfide as a sole sulfur source and for some of them, um, even more compounds than that. Uh, in our lab, we mainly work with members of the genus Methanosarcina, order Methanosarcinales, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the one that we uh, love the most next. So Methanosarcina acetivorans or acetivorans, depending on who you're talking to, uh, is a metabol <coughs> metabolically flexible model methanogen. It's a great model system. Um, for one thing, there's a strong genetic system that's been uh, developed so that we can um, manipulate the genome. Uh, and also, it just has lots of copies of everything. So there are as many as maybe three copies of the ISC system, two copies of the SUF system, um, and this is sort of unusual if you look in bacteria to have that many copies of things, but it looks like it's not the only uh, Methanosarcina species that uh, has this. Uh, and we can confirm that it can grow um, on cysteine or sulfide or a combination of the two as sulfur sources, um, and it does just fine. Uh, it also uh, appears to have all three known versions of nitrogenase, uh, molybdenum, vanadium, and the iron-only nitrogenase. Um, so the molybdenum nitrogenase is the one you find in all diazotrophs. Um, the vanadium and iron-only nitrogenases are the alternative nitrogenases, and I'm not going to talk any more about them today. Um, so from here forward, I'll be talking about the molybdenum nitrogenase. And um, I started um, first looking at the ISC2 gene cluster. Uh, these are the proteins that have been detected um, at the highest levels, most consistently in proteomic studies of uh, M. acetivorans. So uh, I briefly, I cloned uh, the two core components, the cysteine desulfurase and the scaffold proteins, S2 and U2, into E. coli overexpressed, purified uh, to homogeneity. Uh, and I did the same for M. acetivorans' aconitase, um, just to have a physiologically relevant uh, target protein to load cluster into. Um, so we can build cluster on uh, the scaffold U protein uh, using the S protein and then incubate it with apoaconotase and monitor for activity. Um, and what we see is we only get robust activation of apoaconotase when it's being incubated with a uh, cluster loaded scaffold. So on its own, there's basically no activity. Uh, and if we incubate it with equivalent um, amounts of iron and sulfide in a reducing environment uh, to what would be found on the scaffold, um, we basically have no activity again. So uh, in vitro, this looks like a bona fide iron sulfur cluster biogenesis system. Um, so we can knock out these genes, and we did that uh, using uh, essentially standard techniques. And what we see is moderately impaired growth um, when this mutant is grown with cysteine as the sole sulfur source. There's a little bit of variability from experiment to experiment, uh, but consistently um, the mutant prefers sulfide. Uh, we can actually uh, assay for cysteine desulfurase activity in cell-free lysates, and when we do that, we see significantly reduced cysteine desulfurase activity um, in the mutant compared to the parent, regardless of what sulfur source uh, the cells grew on. <clears throat> um, so 
uh, we see what we think is some altered sulfur metabolism, although there's no gross uh, cluster assembly defect. So if we just look at acid labile sulfide uh, to see how much um, cluster content there is in the mutant versus the parent, there's no significant difference regardless of sulfur source. When we look at sulfane sulfur, um, so this is mechanistically important for the cysteine desulfurase, it's sort of how it works. Uh, and this is also has implications for the sulfur relay system uh, in sulfur metabolism. Uh, when we look at sulfane sulfur, we see a significant reduction um, anytime cysteine is present as a sulfur source. Um, so that's sort of an interesting thing to see in combination with um, basically no difference in cluster content. Um, so uh, switching back to the wild type real fast, uh, MSotiverins can fix nitrogen uh, regardless of what it's using as a sulfur source, cysteine versus sulfide. Um, maybe somewhat surprisingly, uh, neither cysteine nor alanine, which is the sort of side product of cysteine desulfurase, um, neither one of these amino acids, uh, despite having an amino group, can serve as a nitrogen source for imacitivirins. Um, so when we grow under um, nitrogen replete conditions or um, under nitrogen fixing conditions where there's no ammonium present, uh, there doesn't seem to be a huge difference uh, or preference for sulfur source. Um, and when we do a Western blot and go looking for the catalytic subunit, one of the catalytic subunits of uh, the molybdenum nitrogenase, uh, we see it show up only when ammonium is absent and it's um, being produced uh, abundantly, whether cysteine or sulfide is the sulfur source. Uh, so the mutant strain uh, deleted of ISC2, um, when we uh, grow it under nitrogen fixing conditions with sulfide as a sulfur source, there is no phenotype whatsoever. Um, however, if we try growing it with cysteine, there is a pronounced growth defect. Um, again, that varies somewhat from experiment to experiment. This is probably the most severe um, iteration of it that we've seen, but there is a strong, strong preference for uh, growth with sulfide as the sulfur source uh, under nitrogen fixing conditions, especially uh, with this mutant. So that has led us to a proposed model of um, cluster biogenesis in the methanogen uh, in imacitivirins, in which cysteine is routed through the ISC system um, and then can be used to load cluster into um, proteins as needed, uh, and that uh, inorganic sulfide may be going through um, perhaps a sort of primordial subsystem, um, because these subsystems, I told you, they're pretty universal in archaea, but uh, they're never really paired with a suf s cysteine desulfurase. So it seems like um, the suf system is maybe primordial in archaea and, um, and not really geared towards using cysteine. So um, the results that I've showed are consistent with still being able to load cluster into molybdenum nitrogenase uh, using sulfide but there is a serious problem um, once we uh, cut off the ISC system and um, that specific ISC2, ISC1 and ISC3 are still present, um, but apparently they are not able to um, provide for normal maturation of the molybdenum, molybdenum nitrogenase when cysteine is the sulfur source. Um, and so I'd like to thank my uh, advisor, uh, PI Dan Lesner, other members of the Lesner Lab, uh, our collaborator Everett Dewan, who's done some great uh, biophysical characterization of uh, proteins for us that I didn't really have time to share with you today. And uh, then also um, thank the funding agencies for their generosity. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thanks, Thomas. We have time for a few questions. Yeah, that was really nice. Um, uh, you mentioned that your bacterium uh, uh, has all three different uh, types of uh, nitrogenases. Um, I didn't catch, perhaps you already said this, but are you looking at a, at, a, at a deleted version that only has one at a time, or have you tried building such a thing to, to see whether some of them might be more affected by the, by the various conditions that you've been describing? We are looking into that. We don't have... Um anything where we have uh, actually deleted the nitrogenase, but it's possible to grow under conditions where you don't give them any molybdenum. 
and then they have to use alternative nitrogenases. Um, so we are working on that, yeah. I think we have time for other questions, if there are any. Thanks for the great talk. Um, I'm, I'm, the data were coming pretty quickly, so I'm sorry if I oh, sure. missed something. But it seems like in the ISC2 mutant, you, under growth with sulfide, you had in, maybe even an increased amount of sulfane sulfur. And you also saw some sort of ISC2-like activity. Does that suggest there's another group of proteins that are accomplishing this function? Yes. Um, certainly for the second part of your question, um, the most parsimonious explanation would be those other ISC um, clusters have bona fide cysteine desulfurases. Um, a more complicated answer would be uh, in the methanogens that we don't really work with and that are predicted not to have cysteine desulfurase, if you crack them open and look for cysteine desulfurase activity, you'll find it. Um, so we probably don't know everything that's going on. I think it would be really great to look at that latter class of methanogens with these assays. Mm -hmm. It's really exciting. Thank you, Thomas. All right, thanks. So our next speaker, Miriam Tessasvili, is she, is she around? So it doesn't look like she might have made it to the conference, so I apologize uh, for that talk uh, isn't uh, going to be coming up. So we have a few minutes. If there's other questions uh, while we're waiting for the next talk for the speakers that have already uh, presented, we're happy to field a few questions while we're waiting. Sure, Sean. I have a question for you. Yeah, go for um, it. Before the oxygenation of the atmosphere, what would be the source of sulfite? I, I kind of thought that it went to either sulfate or sulfide, but is there a sulfite component in what we expect to be coming out from volcanoes and then going into the ocean? Yeah, so, um, well, I won't bring it up, but, you know, sulfur dioxide, so I mentioned the, the disproportionation reaction where it goes to sulfate uh, as well as hydrogen sulfide, but that's at higher temperatures. At lower temperatures, it can just hydrate to sulfurous acid as well uh, with water. And so that can speciate depending on, you know, the pH. It could be uh, at lower pH, sulfur dioxide or sulfurous acid. At higher pH, bisulfite, or at still higher pH, sulfite. Um, so there's a potential that you could have sulfite there and without oxygen or ferric iron present, it could potentially be stable. And I had a diagram on an extra slide, but yeah. Uh, sure, I think there's a question in the back. Hey, um, I was, um, so we know that, for example, in E. coli, the soft system is uh, assigned for the de novo cluster synthesis compared to ISC, which is basically uh, for repair when one iron falls off, you just use ISC to put that one iron back. And um, like in the lab, for example, we, we put our enzyme, ISC, DTT for reduction and iron, and it uh, basically repairs the cluster without uh, the need for anything else. So is, is there anything similar like the, these two jobs for, like are the two in your box doing the same thing or they are all like doing just um, de novo synthesis? Not entirely sure. So the, the very first part of what you were saying um, that the different jobs, uh, different roles for ISC and stuff in E. coli? Yeah. So. My understanding is that ISC is the, the general system and that um, SUF is more expressed if there is um, oxidative stress or a lack of iron, is that? Uh, the other way around, but yeah. Okay. But yeah. Um, I, I was just wondering if, if, if that's the case here or they are just like two systems doing exactly the same job. Probably not doing exactly the same job. Um, so, uh, if you were talking about a little bit of oxidative stress um, where like one iron has fallen out of the cluster, then yeah, I would guess that probably either one could 
um, could handle that kind of repair. Um, but, well, and for instance, with Econotase, if you don't um, really make it APO and fully strip it out, usually what's happening is one iron's being lost and you can reactivate it like pretty easily just by incubation with DTT and, um, so yeah, that probably doesn't answer your question, but um, yeah, I, I bet they're not fully redundant. Thanks.